Good morning. Good to see you and to be gathered here today for worship. Uh, we're uh, glad to, to welcome you, those who are in person or those who are viewing online. As we uh, begin the service, we want to just draw a few and add attention or a little bit of attention to our announcements. You'll see uh, our calendar of events on the back of the bulletin. Uh, one thing we're doing today, we're rolling out a program. We've already, I guess, started sharing it with some of you. Uh, we're going to be uh, subscribing uh, to, well, we have subscribed to a service called Amplified Media that provides um, uh, a lot of Sunday school curriculum online, a lot of uh, uh, personal Bible study kind of pieces that can be used. If you, you might think of it kind of as the Netflix of uh, Sunday school video material, and uh, we're uh, going to be leading a session uh, immediately after our 12 o'clock service, or 11 o'clock service, so it'll be about 12 o'clock, um, our 11 o'clock service to, to kind of introduce that to different leaders in our Sunday schools and small group leaders. If you're one of those, you've received an invite, would, we hope you'll be in attendance, we'll uh, help you get signed up. We'll teach you about how Amplified Media works and resources that will be available for your class. At a later date, we're going to be rolling this out to the whole congregation uh, as, a, as a free subscription service that, well, it's not free, the church is paying for it, but it'll be free for you to sign up. And uh, to be able to use in your own life, uh, Angie and I have it hooked up on our television, on our my laptop, um, cell phone, kind of things like that where you can use. So. Uh, would invite you to be looking forward to that. Um, also, uh, there'll be a number of committees and other activities that will be taking this place, along with this being uh, our month to help support Project 66, a way of providing care uh, for those who are hungry in this immediate community. Uh, those are a couple of our announcements. Now, as we move from uh, busyness of our church and activity that we do, we come to focus on the one thing that is essential and central to our lives, and that is to bring worship to God. Let us open ourselves as we now begin the service.
Please stand for the call of worship. How are you this morning? It would be easy for us to say, fine, thank you. But the truth is that there are lots of things going on in our lives, lots of time crunches and pressures. You have come to the right place. Rest for a minute. Take a deep breath and let it out slowly. Just relax and let your heart be open to God's word for you. That sounds good, to rest in God's presence. Feel the healing, soothing power of God's love for you. Lord, we rest our minds, spirits, and hearts in your compassionate love. I invite you to be seated and let us join together in the prayer of brokenness and confession. Sometimes, God, we can see no reason to join in prayers of confession, for we believe we are the faithful ones doing the right things. At other times, we despair at our attitudes, our stinging words, our insensitivity to others. We live as if the world revolves around us and soon become alienated from one another and you. Forgive our anxiety and distractions so we can focus once more on your intentions for us in your presence, O oh God. Amen. When we awake from our sin, we realize that we are still with God. In Jesus Christ, our reconciliation with God has already occurred. Forgiveness is real. We've received a new spirit. Let us continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel. As restored people, let us greet one another with signs of peace. And with that, let us stand as you are able and offer each other signs of greeting.
that could not satisfy and then I heard my Savior speaking draw from my well that never shall run dry fill my cup Lord I lift it up Lord come and quench this thirsting of my so bread of heaven feed me till I want no more fill my cup fill it up and make me whole there are millions on this earth who are craving the pleasures earthly things afford but none can match the wondrous treasure that I find in Jesus Christ my Lord Fill up Lord I lift it up Lord come and quench this thirsting of my soul bread of heaven feed me till I want no more fill my cup Fill it up and make me whole. So, my brothers, if the things this world gave you leave hungers that won't pass away, my blessed Lord will come save you if you kneel to him and humbly pray fill my cup Lord I lift it up Lord come and quench this thirsting of my soul Thank you so much, Abby. And as we continue our worship and ministry, let us stand as you are able for our hymn of proclamation, Be Thou thy, My Vision 451.
may be seated. Our scripture lesson this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, beginning at verse 38. Listen for God's word for you this morning. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. And, she, and so she came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm not a fan of going to the doctor. Um, I have not needed to go to the doctor a whole lot over the course of my life, although I've hit a certain age where now it seems to be required more often. My doctor seems to be very concerned about how my heart functions. There's not anything to indicate there's any problem, but on both sides of my family, there are long history of, of heart issues. So I've taken to learning a little bit more about the heart. The heart, um, as you may or may not know, uh, I, I learned just, you know, and it'll have to be true because I found it on the internet, right? A Google search says that the average human heart beats around 100,000 times a day. 100,000 times. If you think, you know, 75 might be a typical heartbeat uh, per, per minute and you add it all up 100,000 times. Um, we probably only think about it just occasionally in the course of the day. 100,000 times. That's three, 35 million times a year. For the average person, that means 2.5 billion times over the course of their life that the heart will beat. Um, it's a lot of times. Something we rely upon, something so basic. The heart uh, opening itself to draw blood in from the body, contracting to send it back out through the body. All the work that it does, the ways that it brings life and carries life uh, to us that we, we really don't even seem to be connected to or aware of too often. No wonder the heart is so important to our vitality. And there's that rhythm of the heart, the gathering in and the sending out, the, the pumping of blood that is so essential and so important. The heart seems to be at the core. We use the heart to talk about metaphorically the, the place where our feelings, our emotions are. We talk about the center part of our body. We feel it in our heart, heart ache. Um, someone once said, you know, the, the longest journey we ever take is from the head, I know, to the heart, I know. The longest journey we ever make is that short journey from our understanding to having the heartfelt understanding. The heart plays such a central place as an image in our understanding of emotion, of feeling. And so this morning in our scripture, we see Jesus gathered in a home with a family, and he's talking to them after dinner has finished. Um, it's kind of a beautiful scene in many ways, one that probably played out hundreds of times, maybe even, even more or dozens of times at least in Mary and Martha's home. We know that they are present with Jesus in ministry throughout almost the, the entirety of the, the three years of his earthly ministry. Mary and Martha are faithful followers of Jesus, and they are offering hospitality to Jesus and the disciples while they are in town. I'm sure that it was the regular stop whenever they arrived in that village, and Martha happily welcomes Jesus 
prepares the meal, takes care of everybody who is there, and as they are there, just this amazing kind of family scene. Most of these days that they would have been there together are unremarkable. They're, you know, just the regular conversation that's had. And, um, but, but, but this one comes to us, um, you can even imagine in the early church before they'd even written these stories down. Um, after Jesus' death and resurrection, they're gathered together in worship and someone says, Martha, do you remember the day when Jesus was at your house? Tell us about what happened. And she would tell the story, or maybe Mary would tell the story, or maybe one of the disciples would say, uh, they had all gathered together, they'd been so tired, and Jesus was talking, and they worship, they'd, uh, not worship, but they'd had the dinner, and they were, uh, were just gathered together, and Jesus was just sharing about what all had happened about in life, and, and, and Mary was so consumed by what all was happening. She sat there and listened to every word that Jesus had, and it didn't sit so well with Martha. She struggled with this. She struggled because uh, her orientation to life was different than Mary's. Maybe it was typical of their lives. Maybe it was typical of their personalities. Or maybe this was a distinctly different moment. But as they were gathered there together, Martha is providing the care, and Mary is soaking in the presence of Jesus. My mother likes to tell the story about of the sisters in her family, and there were no boys, so we can't just, if, although it probably fell along very stereotypical gender lines, the, the three girls that were there in the family, after dinner was done, their responsibility was to clean up and help take care of the kitchen with mom. And she would always tell the story about her other sister, Carol, who always would go to the bathroom when it was time to clean the kitchen. And seemed to never make it out until it was mostly done. Do you have any stories like that in your family? Um, you can hear, you, you call those up to your mind as you hear the story. You, you feel the presence, you remember how they take place. And you've heard those stories over the years so many times. Or maybe you told those stories on yourself or on another. We see that throughout. We were gathered for Methodist men yesterday, and we had, oh, 25 or 30 men in the Christian Activity Center, and uh, it was a nice breakfast, great breakfast. The, those who came early at 7 to make sure dinner or breakfast was all ready, and then uh, those like myself who come in just a little before 8, and then we had breakfast, and they asked the group to uh, make sure all the tables and chairs are wiped down and then put away, and, and it's a pretty efficient group. They begin to work on that pretty quickly, and it's done. Um, I really try to make sure I help out, but yesterday was one of those days somebody asked me a question, and before I realized it, I had not put away a table or a chair or anything like that. And and this part of me, there must be a little bit of Martha in me, began to feel guilty about that being the case. I, I did notice, though, it was a couple of other preachers who I was talking to, and we were gathered together, and we were not the ones doing the work and putting things away. It's interesting the ways we have recollections and remember. But I think it's not that Mary loved Jesus and Martha did not. Or that Martha loved Jesus and Mary did not. In a way, it is kind of that both of them had great love for him. And both of them had great respect for him, and both of them wanted to serve, and each of them did so in ways that played out to their individual strengths. Did Martha really not understand how things would work that day? Uh, You've heard enough sermons, you've heard enough scripture, read enough scripture to know that immediately when you hear one and two. There are two sisters. There are two brothers. A man had two sons. We know how these stories work, don't we? One, the responsible one, one who's not so responsible. Was Martha surprised? Because as soon as we hear it, two sisters, 
we kind of begin to create an idea in our minds about where the story might go. She could not have been surprised. Can you tell me which one was probably the older sister? I bet you have an idea, don't you? Which was the younger sister? We understand how these things work. She couldn't have been much surprised. Two ways of loving, work and worship. Work and worship. Uh, feeding the soul and being sent out into mission. Gathering the blood into the heart and then sending it out to work on behalf of the body. There's kind of a heartbeat rhythm to the way our Christian faith works, isn't there? We gather for worship. We gather to draw close to God. If you will, this is a merry moment for us. We come to be at Jesus' feet. We come to soak up his presence, to be with him, to rest with him, and then to be sent out to work and serve into the world. Um, both of these parts seem to be so centrally a part of our Christian faith. We know that it's not one or the other, but it's both of them functioning together. In a way, they give us an example for the balance we should have in our faith. While some of us may lean a little more one way or lean a little more the other, we're all to carry them both. And, and both of them are represented throughout the whole of the ministry of the church. Those in our lives, we come to be in our presence with Jesus. Sunday morning is about that for us as we gather for worship, as we go into our Sunday schools, we study, we, we do the work of um, letting Jesus be present in our lives so that then we can be Jesus' presence in the world to show his love, his compassion, to offer care about service. It's interesting, too, although it's in the opposite order. Last week, the, the, the scripture right before this is the one of the Good Samaritan about how we are to serve and to love and, if you will, this work component about our faith that, um, that feeds into that presence. And then on the other side of it, the next scripture we'll talk about next week flows right into the Lord's Prayer where Jesus teaches them about how we are to pray, how we're to be in God's presence. It's that twofold piece, isn't it, of service and of worship. Two parts of our lives that function that are like a heartbeat rhythm of being gathered together and sent out to serve, of coming in to be nurtured in worship and to be in God's presence and then to go out an in and an out rhythm of our faith. In the, the church, we, we use a lot of big fancy words, theologians do, to, to help, us, help describe our, uh, who we are and our practice of our faith, to help give us ways to understand. There's a word that used to be talked about a lot in the church. You hear it a lot these days, again, uh, called orthodoxy. Um, you probably know the first part of that word from an orthodontic, um, orthodontics, um, uh, who straightens the teeth, uh, the practice. Uh, ortho uh, simply means right, to put things in their right place. So an orthodontic puts our teeth back in the right place. Orthodoxy is about right belief, that there are certain things that we believe together that are right beliefs. And these are the core beliefs of our faith. They are essential. They are central. In uh, United Methodism, in our book of discipline, we have the articles of religion that came to us from uh, John Wesley, selected from the Anglican Church, the articles of religion that are given to the United Methodist Church. They're part of our Constitution. They can't be changed with, unless there's a two-thirds vote of the general conference and all the annual conferences have a three-quarters or three-quarters of all the annual conferences approve them, uh, a, a change. And, and that's not ever happening. That's at the core of who we are. Along with that is the confession of faith from what was a part of the German Methodist, the Evangelical United Brethren Church as we united together. And that is a part of those same confessions of our faith. They're, they're historic. They're a part of, of who we are. We carry them. They're 
basically things that are, are not changeable in our faith. Um, they're the core to which we, we always go. It's what we talk about as our belief, uh, our right belief, orthodoxy. Some use the word orthopraxis. Um, praxis, the word that would mean to practice or to put into action our faith. Right, belie right belief, orthodoxy, right practice of faith or right behavior uh, would be orthopraxis. Um, that we behave in a right way. Um, sometimes people like to use these to, to define who's in and who's out. Um, but John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, uh, while he talked about those things, um, about the importance of right belief, he would always say that there was something that was more central than that. That is a right heart. That we have the right heart in how we love God and we love our neighbor. That if our heart is right, then we are essentially in the place where we need to be. In fact, there's a quote in a sermon that he gave on the uh, Sermon on the Mount in which he says, if thy heart is right as my heart is with thine, I ask no further question. If it be, give, uh, if it, if it be, give me thy hand. For opinion, let us not destroy the work of God. That if our hearts are right with God and right with each other, then we've got the essential core of what life is is all about, what our faith is about. For opinion, those things that fall outside the core of our essentials, beliefs, we're not going to destroy the work of God, he says. We practice this heart religion of making sure our heart is right with God, that we come and we ask God to fill our cup, right? Isn't that uh, a beautiful peace this morning, that we come opening ourselves so that God can be present to our lives. If our heart is right with God, as my heart is right with thee, then give me thy hand. There are no more questions. Mary and Martha, I think, had the core of all that together. They understood a heart religion. Maybe in this moment they had Maybe they'd come off a few days of difficulty, I don't know. But as they are in that moment, they, they seem to have the two pieces kind of held separate. But in Christ, we're called to live the fullness of both of those together. Um, maybe as you look into your own life, you see that you're a little bit more like Martha or maybe a little bit more like Mary. But Jesus calls us to this heart religion. We are to hold both hold them together, and live them faithfully. Amen. With this message from the Word in our hearts and minds, let us join together in our congregational prayer. Creator of all things, form us anew in the likeness of Christ. Open up to us possibilities we cannot imagine and free us from self-imposed limitations. Help us explore the depths of faith and the heights of possibility. For wherever we go, you are with us. Unite us now in empowered worship and service. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come to your house to worship you to prepare for the coming week, to reorient our minds and hearts in a world full of distraction. This world pulls us apart and makes us focus on individuality at the expense of the community and the other you call us to unceasingly care for. We come to this place to remember that we are one people in one mission in this place and across the whole world. We realize this as we lift up our prayers to you, gracious God, who hears our joys, concerns, and desires of our hearts. We lift up all those prayers spoken and unspoken in this space 
and we know you hear them. Walk with us in our strength and in our weakness to be your hands and feet on this earth. Amen. And now let us pray together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us stand as you are able as we join together in our affirmation of faith. I believe God's love is as constant as the waves on the shore. God's blessing is as faithful as the stars in the night. God's luring is as persistent as the sun's warming rays. God's passion for justice is as bright as a blazing fire. God's joy is exuberant as the swirling wind. God's generosity is as abundant as a forest. God's care is as gentle as an evening prayer. God is for us. I invite you to be seated. And as the ushers come forward, let us just think a moment about the fact that we've been called to change this community and to change this world by reaching out and making a difference. Let us pray. Lord, the light of your presence shines in our lives. Give us eyes of faith so that we will see that Christ is present in our very midst right now. Receive these gifts we offer now as a sign of our gratitude and commitment to live into our new reality in Jesus Christ. We ask this as a people clothed in your grace. Amen.
Our closing hymn is number 400, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. As we join together in singing, would invite anyone who's visiting with us this morning who would like to make this your church home, would invite you to come forward as we sing. We'll meet you up front and uh, be glad to receive you into membership. Uh, let us join together in singing. So next week will be the last Sunday in July. Let's, next week will be the last week that choir has off. So we're going to look forward to seeing choir, the choir back. I, I desperate. Two more Sundays. Oh, goodness. Oh, man. All right. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm all confused here. We'll never forget that. But what I, I should say is I am really looking forward to having the choir back after their summer break of July. Let us join together in our sending forth. Bless to us, O oh God, the thresholds we cross. Go with us as we go. Alleluia.